There are 22 more people per square kilometre in the Netherlands when compared to New Zealand. So you have to get very creative as to how to move people around. While trains, trams, buses are plentiful, car ownership is 35% lower than New Zealand. So the bike has to step up as the short to medium term distance people move up. They, the bikes, also carry dogs, groceries and even long loads. A large variety of bikes are seen from one wheeler, two, three, four, five and even six wheels. Yes, six wheels. We'll come to that later. They carry 1 to 11 riders from sit up like Grammy bikes to stable 3 and 4 wheelers. But the big family mover seems to be the Dutch cargo bike with a small front wheel, then a long passenger cargo box. Next comes the handlebars, seat, and large rear wheel, similar to a standard bike. Normally powered by mum, with up to four small children in the box and often one or two larger children in the carrier seat behind. In recent years, the mums have been getting electrical assistance and they power along the bike lanes at 25 kilometres per hour, weaving in and out their long wheelbase charges, not appearing to slow down for corners or other bikes, certainly not for pedestrians. A skill shown I put down to biking from birth. I hired a kagaroo a few times to ferry the granddaughters round as I found it easier than towing the fence car or bike trailer. These kagaroos are dotted all around the cities and you use an app to hire them when and as required. Traditional cargo bikes have no suspension and a rod steer. In the past few years, a couple of new players have entered the market, Levins and Gokhol. I particularly like the design and functionality of the Levins. Both have front suspension to improve the ride and cable steering, which totally changes your steering experience. As one Dutch mum I discussed her Levins with said, now you know exactly where and when you are changing direction and the steering action is so smooth. I'll put a link below to a YouTube showing a lady biking one of these cargo bikes from Amsterdam to Berlin. A similar distance as Wellington to Auckland in New Zealand. If you're not into bikes, you will still enjoy the beautiful countryside they bike through. I did spot two extra large four-wheeled cargo bikes. They each had 10 or so young teenagers standing in the high front box, being pedaled by an adult. The fun they were having as they travelled past, I suspect it was a school holiday youth group activity. But my Dutch is invisible, so I may have been wrong. However, I did see one on a kindergarten run with 10 small passengers inside. It all looked like it was a fun way to travel. Folding bikes are plentiful because you can take one on the train without having to pay for a bike ticket. There are shops that specialise in folding bikes and they have plenty to choose from. They mostly have very small 16 inch wheels, however I spotted one with 26 inch wheels and electric motor, which looked like it would be significantly more comfortable to ride on cobbles. Traditional tandems are rare and mostly old. However, recumbents are not unusual, including tandem models. I even spotted a six-wheel recumbent. 
Bike thefts are frequent, so most bikes have both an integrated lock and a heavy chain lock. A lot of people have a good bike and a banger bike, which means they can choose which they leave in at-risk situations. Abandoned bikes are seen all over the place. Presumably they have been stolen, used and left where the journey finished. The local councils have teams that regularly collect these bikes and they seem to be recycled through second-hand bike shops. So it's always cheap and easy to buy a banger bike. Numerous bike parking sites are found in cities and near railway stations. Some of these are multi-storey and house or park thousands of bikes, all with bike escalators for easy access and are often located underground. Also spotted was a water bike gliding through a canal in Utrecht. I'm not sure if they're called cat bike or biker moran. Whatever, they look like a stable, easy canal bike to travel on. Bikes are restricted to a speed limit of 25 kilometers an hour in the built-up areas, but they've recently added a new category of higher-powered e-bike. On these, you can travel up to 40 kilometers per hour, but you must wear a helmet be registered and show a number plate and have accident insurance. Not many of them are seen yet but they zip along often amongst the cars and the car lanes. With all these bikes to accommodate the Dutch have developed a large cycleway network and it is often quicker to bike for journeys under 30 kilometres. From a visitor's observation, the traffic laws seem to favour bikes over cars and pedestrians. So the impact of bikes is significant here in the Netherlands. 36% of the nation being bike commuters. Back in New Zealand, just 2% use bikes to commute. I'm all for the convenience of my car, but all too often I'm the only occupant. Why do we not consider other options for some trips? Since they put a bike trail in our community, I've discovered that I can ride the 15Ks to the city quicker than I can drive in busy peak hour traffic. Plus, I get to smell and enjoy the changing seasons up close and personal, and also improve my fitness. It makes you wonder as you stand by a busy New Zealand road and play spot the car with more than one person in. How much reduction to our road congestion and obesity related hospital admissions could be achieved if we learn from the Dutch and consider taking the bike at least some other time. Also must be an easy way to reduce emissions. We travelled down to Italy and it seemed most European countries certainly use bikes more than we do. In Italy, they are more like the bikes we see in New Zealand, a lot more mountain bike flavour and with suspensions, along with a much higher motorcycle usage. And we'll see a few of those here. As this video is about people moving, I need to also mention rental e-scooters, which seem to have popped up in most cities around the world, and Europe is no exception. These are to the delight and ease of travel for some, and the frustration of the rest of us. For some reason, these e-scooters seem to attract among their users the most inconsiderate of people. I'm finished with it, or its battery's flat, so they just drop it where they are, often in a manner to inconvenience pedestrians. Some cyclists also are at fault. 
even padlocking bikes completely across footpaths. It beggars belief how they get away with it. We trust you enjoyed your viewing of this very different Remote Places New Zealand video, one of our Europe series. Getting out of your car onto a bike slows you down and you see, experience and enjoy the area you are travelling through much more. To receive notifications of future videos, please subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you, Dudley Moore at Remote Places NZ.